Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I am the Caffeinated Crafter and um, today's video is going to be a floss tube video. Um, it's been a couple weeks since I've done a video at all. Um, we are in the middle of April 2020 and uh, right in the middle of a, a whole quarantine thing with the coronavirus if you're watching this a few years down the road. Um, I only say that because I've been binge watching some of some floss tubers and watching videos from like three years ago. So if you're watching this three years down the road. Yeah, it's like right in the middle of the quarantine pain in the butt. Ugh. I'm in Florida. I, I've heard they're reopening the beaches this weekend. I'm like, so aggravated with that. We're just gonna everyone's gonna get sick now. Uh, so anyway, um, Whip wise, I don't have a lot to show you. I'm not gonna lie, this is the second time I've recorded this video. First one, it was well over an hour, and I'm like, oh, I can't put up a video that long. I mean, I have before, obviously. But uh, considering I really only had one whip that I had progress on, that was a long video. But I, okay, so I didn't really do much stitching after my last floss tube video. I didn't really do much of anything craft related after my last floss tube video. Um, and so I was kind of waiting, kind of waiting. And then um, my last, I, I had talked about uh, Be Still from the Cross Stitch Studio, how I had purchased that pattern on the way home from North Carolina. And then I had to go get, I had to find fabric and all that stuff, right? And, um, So after much searching and cursing because the fabric I wanted to get was because of how large this project was, uh, the fabric I wanted was going to end up being a custom cut and I uh, requested from like five, four different uh, websites what their, what the cost would be. And one of them would basically told me that they would not be able to do that at all because of the uh, quarantine stuff or they were out of stock or something. And then the other three were ranging anywhere from 75 to $80. And I was already spending over $100 on the floss. Like, you know, I didn't really want to spend $80 on a plain fabric that I was going to be doing a full coverage piece on. It's not like I'm spending... You know, it's not like it's a, a hand dyed fabric that's like got modeling and different colors and I'm doing like, you know, something where you're going to see the fabric. You ain't going to see the fabric. I don't want to spend that much money on a plain piece of fabric. Because I wanted 18 count, but that was bigger. Like uh, one, two, three stitch actually explained the, why it was going to be so much. They were going to have to order two yards of fabric for me in the longest size that they could possibly get which was 51 inches and then they were going to have to custom cut that for me and they were, they were the cheapest ones the other places that i had uh contacted i don't even remember who all they were they were going to be a lot more money so i ended up i started thinking about it and i looked and the page that the cross stitch studio one of the pages uh the first page of the floss key it says on here that the um, stitch size for 22 count was going to be 44 and a half by 33 and a half. And I was like, all right, well, let me do this because I can, I can jimmy rig uh, the, the fabric border at the end. I don't care about that. You ain't going to see that, you know, if I have to, I'll order a frame online. I'll frame the damn thing myself. You know, because I know some framers are like, I can't do that with that little amount of border. I found a piece of 22 count hard anger um, on one, two, three stitch that was big enough that was readily available and it was in stock and it was only like 55 bucks. So I got it and I already had most of the floss and, um, I had most of the floss already and then my fabric came and then I was sad because it was like going to take a little while to ship and then all of a sudden it shipped and then all of a sudden it was here. 
so I started. Um, so, it's a lot of fabric. Yeah, yeah. I'll show you a close up in a minute. I just want you to see. And yes, I only have an inch and a half border at the top and I will have an inch and a half at the bottom. I can make it work. But look how long this thing is gonna, or look how wide this thing is gonna be. Da 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 ba -ba. I'm gonna insert a picture here of me holding the fabric up while I'm standing. It's as tall as I am. So again, this is 22 count hard anger. It is uh, in the shade winter gray. I didn't want anything pure white because obviously that's going to be really bright on my eyes. And I didn't need a fancy color because it's a full coverage. Here is what I have so far. Let's not put it in my coffee. Here is what I have so far. I am almost halfway done with page one. I am doing this two over one. Um, it is looking a little bulky for me, but I am not going to pull any of this out. I am not going to restitch this. I'm going to continue with what I am doing. It's fine. It just, because you're going to be looking at it from a distance. You ain't going to know. But looking at it up close, it is, it is pretty, uh, it is pretty bulky, but that's okay. That's all right. I will survive. Um, I'm doing a few different new things with this. Um, I am gritting for the first time ever in my life. The reason why I'm gritting is because I didn't have that much of a border to begin with at the top and the bottom. And I was definitely afraid of uh, starting in the wrong spot and running out of room. Because of, of course, I'm not going to realize that until I get to the bottom of the fabric. And that's a lot of fabric to get through before you realize you ran out of room. So I um, measured an inch and a half down and I measured three inches in and then I gritted. Uh, let me see if I can show you this here. I gritted like this. I don't know if you can, how well you can see it. I think you can see it. I think you can see it. But I did like every 10... Um, I made a mark and then I made a long one for every hundredth stitch. So every 10 stitches I made a mark and then every hundredth I made a long mark. And then I count, I went all the way across just, just doing that right there. And then all the way down. Really my main concern was this, was this uh, length here. I wanted to make sure I had enough room and I do. It ends right there. And that's the bottom of the fabric. So I have an inch and a half border at the top and the bottom, which is a little daunting for some people. But, you know, I'm going to make it work. I'm going to make it work. Um, and I am, so I gritted for the first time ever. And then I went ahead and gritted out the first page. And I, I kind of like it. I don't think I will do gritting. F I, I don't know how I've, I, I do like it for this project. I really do. Um... I'm not sure how I will feel if I would do it for one that is not full coverage just because I have this innate fear that the um, marker, it's a, it's a water soluble fabric marker and I'm not sure, I still don't know if it would come out if it wasn't a full coverage piece, like if I washed it, if the marker would come out. It's just because I've seen people say, oh, I did marker and it didn't come out. So, but this is full coverage, so it doesn't matter because you don't see my grid lines from before. Um, I'm also doing a few different uh, things with this in the fact that I decided to do, I'm doing 100 blocks, 100, I'm doing one block at a time and I am parking. And I am, I decided to make it, well, I'm sure some of you will understand. Most of you I think will understand. I decided to make it fun and interesting. And I did block one 
Then I went down here and I did this block and then I did this block and then I went down and I did this one, this one, this one. And I'm doing it in a diagonal because as you can see, this is a lot of brown and I knew I was going to get bored with doing just browns like that. Um, going all the way because the top, the very top of this is these shades of brown all the way across. And I'm like, I'm going to get so bored with that. So doing it diagonal, I'm getting like different colors peppered in. And then as I'm getting down here, I'm getting into like the blues and purples. This is the sky. And um, I have a few fun facts for you about this. So this is the sky. And like I said, I'm doing it in the diagonals. This over here is the edge of page one. And then I have half of a block down here to do, and that will be the bottom of page one. So like I said, I'm almost halfway done with page one. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down here, and I'm gonna do this page. And when I'm done with this one, I'm gonna come up here next to page one and do this page. Then I'm gonna go down here and do the one below this page, and then this one, and then this one. And I've got a schematic of all the pages. So I'm doing page one right now. Is that page one? Yeah. I'm doing page one right now. Then I'm going to do page 17 and then page two. Then I'm going to do page 33, 18, and then page three. So I'm going to do the pages in a diagonal, but then I'm doing the pages in a diagonal. And I think I'm really going to prefer doing that because it's going to keep it entertaining for me regarding the fact that um, it's going to be color changes and I'm going to see the design coming out more because I've had a few realizations doing this project and also from watching another floss tuber while I've been doing this project, which I'll tell you about that in a little bit. Um, so this is page one of 144. Okay, so some fun facts about this project. So this is from the crossstitchstudio.com. The title of this is Be Still. And like I said, if I didn't already, I'll insert a picture of what it looks like uh, completed because I don't have a color photo. I mean, this is what it looks like, but obviously this is black and white. And so I'll have a, a <coughs> sorry, uh, I'll have a picture of what it looks like. If I didn't already insert it, I'll have inserted it by now. Um, and it's so gorgeous. I'm so excited about this. Um, but uh, anyway, the title of this is called Be Still. And um, it is 979 by 737 stitches. So as you can see, it's going to be huge. This is, like I said, this is on 22 count hard anger and it's 22 over, over one. Um, it is 143 colors. This, so far, what I've done has been 33 colors. Does that look like there's 33 colors in there? No, it's there's a there's some confetti, and I'm not gonna lie, there is um, like for the most part, the confetti isn't bothering me, and I think it's because of the parking. Like I'm doing one block at a time, so I'm just I'm doing uh, with my blocks. What I'm doing is when I look at the block, I'm like, okay, which one has the least amount of color? I'm doing those first because it'll like I might have one stitch down here and then another stitch here and then another stitch here and then that'll be it for that color. So I'm doing those first. That way when I fill in with the one that's more predominant, it's covering up those stitches. Let me show you the back of the back of this. It's covering those stitches up so I don't have threads flying all over the place. See, that's the back of my work. Um so I've done, I've used 33 colors. Um, I, let me see. There's a total of 721,523 stitches in this thing. It is all full cross stitches. There's no half stitches. There's no quarter stitches. There is no back stitching, which I am so happy about. So if you hate that back stitch, if you hate backstitching like I do, this website is for you. <laughs> Sound like an AM advertisement. Because there's none of their patterns have backstitching. All the detail comes from the amount of colors that they use. And I mean, if you don't like confetti, this ain't for you. 
I'm going to tell you right now, if you don't like confetti, you're not going to like this because I'm using an average of about minimum five, but usually about seven or eight colors in each hundred stitch block. Um, it is a lot of confetti, but like I said, I'm doing parking and it's kind of making my life easier. Cause when I get to the block, um, when I'm done with that color, I park it in another block around it. And then by the time I get to that block, like this block here that I'm going to be working on next, I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I have seven colors parked in that block right now. And I'm not even sure if I need more colors in it, but I don't have to thread it. I, I, of course I have to thread the needle. I'm sorry. What am I trying to say? I don't have to pull the thread out and pull the floss and everything to get that color for like one stitch. I make that stitch and then I park it in the next one. So it's saving me some time, I feel. Um, so anyway, 721,523 stitches total. I have done 2,840. The 40 comes from the partial block up here. Um, I am 0.39% done. 0.39% completed. Not even half of a percent. Um, <laughs> that's okay though. I started working on this on April 8th of this year. I'm using a um, spreadsheet that I got from another floss tuber whose name is Emily R. That is literally her name on here, Emily R. I think she might have a period at the end of the R. Um, but one of her older videos, she uh, she had a she had a spreadsheet she was using that was telling her the percentage of colors that she's used in a project, how far along she was, you know, stuff like that. And um, she offered it up for free to download. Um, so I did, and I'm using it for this project because I downloaded it before I started this. So, but what what I really liked about it, she did a fabulous job with it. Emily, if you're watching this great job because I love this spreadsheet. absolutely love it. Um, it calculates based on your stitching, you can update it. I'm using it through Google Sheets because um, my computer is stupid and I had to like basically wipe it out and I lost my Microsoft Office, which I had gotten for free from my stepdad anyway. So it's not like I lost out on the money, but I can't redownload it right now because I got it for free from somebody else. So that's okay though, because my computer runs like crap anyway. So I need a new one. Maybe I'll ask for one for my birthday. Um, anyway, it calculates based on your stitches as you update it on the page. Um, the spreadsheet has like, you can list what number page you're working on, how many, how the size of the page. So it calculates how many stitches you have. Then you put in how many stitches you've done so far and it tells you the percentage. You know, there's other da data that you enter in when you start, but based on the time that you started the project and how many stitches you've done, it'll give you an estimate as to when it thinks you will finish the project. And of course, if you do no stitching that day, it's going to extend the time out of said project. So, this is not going to be an accurate because the date keeps changing every day for me. The date changes because of either how much or how little stitching I do that I enter into the, into the system. As of right now, my estimated finish date is March 23rd, 2027. Um, and, um, that is actually going to be pushed out because I am going to be working on some other projects. I've been working exclusively exclusively on this since April 8th. I have not done anything else. And I am going to uh, be working on other projects um, because I would like to get some things done. Um, and I don't want to get sick of this. I don't want to get sick of this. Uh, so, but so far I am really enjoying it. Um, if you have any questions about how I'm doing, what I'm doing or why I'm doing it, by all means, ask me, um, I will answer, you know, ask me in the comment section down below. I will answer your questions and then I will address it in my next 
uh, floss tube video. Um, I'm really enjoying the way that I am working on this, the diagonals, and I am excited about how I'm going to be working this project and the fact that I'm good because it's 144 pages. This is a long-term project. I'm not going to get, you know, it's physically impossible to do it in a year. My goal, I turn, I, my goal is to have this done before I turn 50, which is in 10 years. I turn 40 this year. Not yet. I'm not 40 yet. I turn 40 this year. My goal is to have it done before I, by the time I'm 50. I want to have it done by my birthday, which is in October of 2030. So if I need to, I will increase because of this spreadsheet, this will tell me as I'm working, this is going to tell me, uh, help me track how fast I'm making progress on it. So I, I Again, Emily R., thank you so much for that spreadsheet. You put so much work into it. I, I'm sure I would not, it, I would have been able to figure it out. It, I mean, it's a bunch of formulas on Excel. I would have been able to eventually figure it out, but it would have taken me forever. A lot of Googling, a lot of YouTube tutorials. I would have gotten frustrated. Thank you for doing all that work and providing it for, for free because that, that was really fabulous of you really fabulous of you because I'm really liking that spreadsheet. It's going to help me keep on my goal of having this done by my birthday of 2030 because I'll be able to see my estimated finish date and bump it up. Um, as of right now, that'll be three years. I think I'm going to have to, I, because of another floss tuber, I decided that I want to try to do something regarding my, my projects. Um, I get bored very easily with my projects. I um, So I'm going to set this aside for right now. I want to, um, I don't want to get bored with this. Um, oh, by the way, let me just show you how crazy I am. I don't want to show you the, not that you're going to be able to figure out the pattern from this. Because <laughs> this is how big the, <laughs> the pattern is. <laughs> this is the pattern. Plus three more pages that I have sitting over here in a pile. This is the pattern, 144 pages. My kids read books less than the number of pages that this pattern is. And they're all like the patterns, full size, full size. Now, if somebody wants to sit there, I mean, you can't figure that. So that's why I was like, you know, full size patterns. Um, but anyway, uh, if you guys have any questions about like, you know, what I'm doing regarding like the parking or anything like that, by all means, ask me, I will um, answer them if I have to, I, you know, if I need to, if it explains it better, I will do a, um, a video showing what I do, like regarding parking and how I mark the pattern and everything. This is my fabric. This is my floss for this project. Okay. Well, this is the floss that I'm using. This is all my extra I and I'm not 100% certain oh this isn't even all that I've got three more colors that were out of stock when I ordered them I got a lot of my floss from Joann's when they had that huge sale right before the quarantine really hit or really started and then I realized um when I got to a certain um symbol on page one I was pissed because I thought I had gotten all the colors I needed for page one and I didn't and so I went on Michael's website and ordered online to do that uh, curbside pickup thing because I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to have to order online and have it shipped and it's going to take forever. And I thought I was going to be stuck because I didn't want to leave one stitch, you know, so, but Michael's was doing the curbside pickup and they had the color I needed. So I was like, oh, thank God. So I went ahead and ordered all the floss that I could to finish the project. And, but there's still three colors that they were out of stock on. So I'm going to have to order those also eventually. Um, yeah, this is, yeah. I have another floss box here. This is for all my other projects that I either have started or want to start that are patterns I've purchased and stuff and not like a kit. So anyway, um, so yeah. Uh, anyway, I, uh, so watching Emily R, the one who, the one who I got that, um, what's it called? 
spreadsheet from. I was watching her uh, floss tube and she started talking about stitching diagonally. And she referred, she uh, referenced um, Blitz Stitch, who is another floss tuber. His name is Brian and he's in Arizona. Hi, Brian, if you watch this. Um, he is one of my new favorite floss tubers. I freaking love this guy. I started watching the video about how he does it. He Now, yes, I am doing it diagonally, but he does it like the whole, like he does like, it's like a 10 or 20 row, like, or column, like, it's like a diagonal line, not diagonal boxes. It's like a smooth line diagonally going all the way across. And he says that he does that because he likes how the design comes out. Like he sees the design better. And I actually really like that idea, which is, I saw his video before, um, I saw, well, she mentioned it and she said that he does it like that because he likes seeing the design come out. And I was like, oh, that's a great idea. So I started doing that with the boxes. I was like, oh, I'll do it in boxes to, to keep that hundred stitch, you know, whatever. And then... Um, and then she had linked his video for the diagonal tutorial, which was from like three years ago. And I was watching it and I'm like, oh, he does a whole smooth line going across the entire pattern. And he showed a video and it was a tutorial of how he, um, marks the box and does the diagonal and then does a parallelogram going all the way across the pattern until he hits the end. Um, But I really, I, I, and then his next video popped up. Um, that was like his fifth video that he had made. Like I said, this was three years ago. And then video number six popped up, I think, or I don't know. But anyway, I was like, oh, let me just see what, else, what he's working on because he, he seems kind of interesting. And one of his whips was Autumn Magic from Heaven and Earth Designs. It's a house from Randall Spangler. And I fell in love. Like, I, Randall Spangler is like one of my favorite artists on that website. I have been eyeing his patterns ever since I found out about that. Like, I came across one of his little dragon ones. And I'm like, oh my God. Now I don't remember what it was. Somebody in like a cross-stitch group on Facebook was doing the train that he that he made. That he, that he designed. He was doing the train and I'm like, because I had looked on heaven and earth before and I wasn't really seeing anything that was catching my eye. And with these projects, those projects being so big, I don't want to go through all that trouble of something that I feel meh about, you know? And one of the guys in the, one of my cross stitch groups was doing the train and I'm like, I like that. And he said, I can't remember the name of the train of the train one, but he said the artist was Randall Spangler. So I started looking at his stuff and I fell in love with it. Oh my God. I love this guy, Randall. Anyway, so he has like houses and it's like autumn magic. And I can't remember what, what the other houses are called, but basically there's a house for every season. And I have been eyeballing those and he's got some dragons and stuff like that, that are really cute. And, um, uh, if you diamond paint, just a quick diamond art club has I, I actually have one of his with Diamond Art Club uh, diamond paintings. And um, they just recently started doing his stuff too in diamond paintings. So anyway, back to cross stitch. Um, so anyway, uh, Blitz Stitch, Brian, uh, was doing Autumn Magic. And I was like, oh my God. And I went back to video number one and I started binge watching him. I had been watching him for like a week and a half. I think probably maybe the second day I was cross stitching, I started on, on Be Still was when I started watching his videos and I had been watching them constantly every time I'm stitching. Um, and my son, like, like, you know, I think I've mentioned before, you know, my kids don't know I have a channel, but they know, but I watch the floss tube and you know stuff like that. I watch floss tube and stuff when they're around. So they know the floss tube people that I like watching or the crafting people I like watching. And so I'm listening to one of Brian's videos and my older son comes up to me and he goes, 
what are you watching? Is that one of the crafting videos? And I'm like, yeah. And he was like, I've never heard a guy on there. And I'm like, I know, but he's awesome. He really is. I like him. Hey, Brian, if you're watching, hi, you're my new favorite floss tuber. Love you. Um, but he talks a lot. Uh, you know, he was talking about, he was like doing rotations and this, that, and the other. And um, I, I, he's kind of inspired me to really try to get some, get some stuff completed. Um, I, you know, because obviously I would like to, I, 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 he talked about a few, uh, he talked about a few different things. And I think I realized with, with the reason, I think part of my problem with not finishing anything or finishing very, very little, I should say projects. I could probably, I can, I think I can count on both hands how many projects that I've actually finished since I was 10, 30 years of stitching. And I think I've finished less than 10 projects, which is sad. Um, and I would like to, I would like to have some finishes. Um, so I, I, I think part of my problem is that I would get bored with things. I would start stitching on stuff and then I get bored with it. And I think maybe it was the way that I was stitching it before. Um, I re kind of realized that with the parking because of the confetti and stuff, because I did a lot of kits from Dimensions and they are very confetti heavy in some areas. A lot of, uh, you know, stitching with two threads, four threads. Some of them you're stitching with six threads, which is a lot. Um, back stitching, which I, that I despise. I've always hated back stitching. I've always hated back stitching always, but it does. I mean, I do know it adds so much detail, but I hate it. I hate it. That's what I love about, about the, this huge project. There's no back stitching. Once I'm done, I'm done. So, um, uh, so I, I think what, because like one of my whips, it's not very big. It's only five by seven. It's, it's the Christmas on the beach one, which is a dimensions kit. It's not very big. It's only five by seven, but, um, I'm getting bored with it, <sighs> which is why I put it down. And then I started on be still. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of take a page from Brian's book and I'm going to start doing my stuff on a rotation. Um, he was, he had like set out a rotation. He was like doing like, you know, but then his stuff was like two months. He was only doing, working on one thing every two months or working on a, a said project every two months. Cause he would do it for like a week at a time. He had like eight whips going on. Then he, you know, he would change things up and everything. And he did this one, he decided, you know, then he started working it. Then he was like going on a finishing frenzy and he was working on one project till it was done because he had a lot of stuff going on. Then he talked about doing his rotation in this one particular way that I really quite enjoyed. And I was like, I think I might try to do it this way. So I think what I'm going to do is either if I don't start it by this week, I might go ahead and just start it this weekend, start my new like rotation this weekend. Um, because I have been working on Be Still for like two weeks straight. I do want to um, continue trying to put in a, a great uh, effort on it. Um, so what I think of what he did was he did project one for one week, right? Sorry, I had an alert. Uh, project one for one week. Then he did uh, project two for week number two. Then he went back to project one. Then he did project two. Then he added project three. Then he went back to one, two, three. Then he added four. So like he would work on each one for like a week. Um, I think I might do that. And I think what I might do is do that. But some of these like throw in some that I'm that I've been doing that I have a lot of progress on and um, do some of these smaller ones that I, that I know I'll finish because then maybe I could actually get some stuff done this year. 
Um, yeah, so the other thing he had done was he had like Autumn Magic, his big huge one. He did that one every other week and then the weeks he wasn't, he would do the other things. But no, I think I might try to do the, uh, oh, he called it something where he, you know, where you just like, every time you get to the end of your rotation, you would add one more project. Um, and then as you finish it, that project would drop off, you know. So I think I'm going to do that and I'm, because uh, I have a lot of projects that I want to start that I need to finish. Um, there's some that I really want to get finished just because I don't want to admit defeat to them. Um, oh, here's one of them right here. This is, okay, so let me go over some of these projects with you that I'm going to be kind of putting into like a circulation here. Uh, this one is... Glory of Autumn. This is a dimensions kit and the design is by Rudy Reichart. Um, it is being stitched on a 14 count ivory Ada. And this is an older kit. I mean, all regarding my actual kits, I think all of them are pretty old because I haven't really bought any kits since um, in the past few years since I've been living in this apartment, I haven't really purchased any actual kits except for two. My Christmas on a Beach and then one other one. And that was recent and that was with a gift card. Um, other than that, everything else I've purchased cross-stitch related has been patterns, um, which I'm quite enjoying. Anyway, so this is what it looks like when it's completed. Okay, let me... And I've shown you this before. All I have left to do is the back stitching. All the cross stitching is completed. I have to finish the back stitching of some branches in these orange trees. I have to back stitch. I have to finish the fence down here. And there's some, I think they're geese. I want to say they're ducks because of the scene, but I think they're geese. I don't know. I've never seen an all white duck. And I got to do the, the house or the barn. I'm sorry, the barn and the wheel. I got to do those. And then it's going to be done. But backstitching is the bane of my existence. And I really, really hate it. I really hate it. I love the effect it gives, but I really hate doing it. I've always been like that. That's never changed. So this is one that I need to finish so that I... So that I can say I, I defeated it. Um, and then, oh, this is one of the ones that I recently purchased. I don't have a picture of what it looks like completed. I don't know what happened to my little picture. But this is Christmas on, a, on, Christmas on the Beach. This is another Dimensions kit. Hold on, because I've got the details in the pattern itself, I think. Christmas on the Beach, it's a Dimensions Gold Collection Kit. I was looking to see if it had the, I think it's a 14 count. I think it's a 14 count um, fabric maybe. It, this is a small one, it's only five by seven. But like I said, I started doing this here and oh my God, I got so sick of doing the same like three colors over and over again and it's just it looks really nice and it's gonna look fabulous once it's done I, I mean I really do like it but I got tired of stitching it and and I think that was my problem was that I got tired of stitching them and I would put them down like I just threw out my history put it down walk away and then never go back to it so that's what I'm hoping that I can accomplish with this rotation is those are going to be two projects that I work into the rotation so that I can finish them this year. Um, this is going to, I think I'm going to do maybe, I don't know how many I'm going to do total, like have like however many projects. So, Cause I mean, I've got like probably a hundred uh, projects that I could start well over a hundred that I that are are either have not started 
or they are like almost done or something. Um, yes, well over a hundred. Anyway, um, so I don't know how many I'm going to work into a rotation of sorts at a time. I'm not really sure. I think it depends on how things start progressing. But this is another one that it's a new start. It will be a new start for me. And this one is called Home. This is another Dimensions kit. Oh, I guess. Oh, you know what? I bought this one last year. Bought it last year at Christmas. I'm such a liar. I Or, or I just can't keep track of my shit. Um, I bought this at Christmas time last year with the intentions of giving it to my best friend once it was done. That's what it looks like. It's not a full coverage, so I have high hopes that I will get this thing done this year and I can give it to her for Christmas this year. That was my original intention. Um, so it's got like, you know, family and uh, hearth and love and, you know, so like different words in the background, which I think is kind of cool. And then it says, a house is made of walls and beams. Our home is made of hopes and dreams. She kind of, she likes that kind of stuff. And the colors go with her house, I think. Like her living room, it goes with her living room. So I'm excited to make this and give this to her. And she doesn't, nobody knows that I have a, have a, a YouTube channel. So I can freely talk about this stuff because there's a few things that I'm going to be making. One for her and then one for my mother. And I can freely talk about them on here because I honestly think that by the time they find out that I have a floss tube channel, they'll already have these as presents. So these are the colors and the, um, the blues are what her living room is kind of like. She's got that kind of blue theme, blue and brown theme going on in her, in her living room. So I really, really am excited to make this and get this to her. So I think this might be like, you know, in my rotation, this might be project number two. Cause I'm really excited to start this one. Every like, you know, looking at it, the more I look at it and think about, you know, having her put this in her house, the more excited I get about it. So I think this might be project number two in my rotation. So I can get it started and then, you know, get it done. Get her done. Um, okay, so another one that I would like to start, I can't show you a picture of what it looks like because I, it's a pattern I purchased off of Etsy and I was trying to save my paper so I didn't print the actual picture of what it looks like, but it's uh, this one I would like to make and give to my mother. Um, and it's um, it says she she works for she um, is the director of HR for the Southeast Division of a major mulch and agricultural c company. And so she uh, it says per my last email which I think is very appropriate. And it's got flowers going down like around the corner. And at first I like, I got it. And then I was like, that's kind of boring. But then I pulled the colors and I was like, wow, those colors are really nice. And I was looking to see what I had available for fabric wise. And I picked this up many moons ago. And the brand I think is True Colors and it's a 22, 28 count even weave and this is what it looks like it's like you see how pretty see how pretty that is so the I really like this and when I pulled the colors for this project once I pulled the colors I was like you know what this actually looks really nice so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to I have them in a floss box how did this go I'm trying to figure out how I had this folded um I'm going I what's it called a floss toss or you like pull the floss and then you throw it, toss it on the fabric to see how it looks on the fabric. I need to do that um, to make sure that the colors go with the fabric. I think they will from what I remember looking at them. And, um, and if that's the case, if it looks good, then I'm going to go ahead and, um, yeah, 28 count even weave. Um, if they look good on this fabric, then I'm going to go ahead and do this pattern on, on this fabric. Um, yeah, so there's that one. And so those are the two like gifts I want to do. Um, and then let me see another small one I would like to do. 
My intention is to get these things. We're only in April. So my intention is to get some of these things done this year. So that's one, two, three, four. I don't know, we'll see, we'll see. I definitely, I definitely will be putting the the two for my, the one for my friend, the one for my mom. I'll be putting those at the top of my rotation list um, because I would like to try to get those done to give them to them for Christmas. Um, this is another little one that I want to do that I think I might put into my rotation. This will be a new start for me. This is from Artiste. It's a little mini kit. This is going to be stitched on 14 count white Ada. And let me do this so I can show you the colors because it's on two little mini cards. So those are the colors that I will be using in this kit. Very pastel -y and mint greeny. And I think it looks really cute. Um, so yeah. I have a few of these kits from Artiste and, um, oh, I think it's from Zweigart. And that's the, the Artiste is like the little side thing. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I don't know what I'm talking about. Don't listen to me. Uh, anyway, I would like to get that one done. That's a little, another little one that I think I could, I, that I'm not stressing about completing this year, but it, it's so small that if I could finish it this year, that would be great. Um, and then there is an, this one I really want to do just to start it because I think it looks really cool. This one is called, is a dimensions kit. It's called a whole lot of latte. And it's going to be stitched on 14 count black Ada. And the reason why I want to do this is because of the colors. Here's the Ada. Look at these colors. Look how bright and cheerful those colors are. I am like, when I look at this thread, I am like super stoked to get, to get started on it. Um, I don't even know what they call these colors because of course it's a dimensions kit. So they have their own colors that they, you know, use. Let's see. And that's French, that's Spanish. Like some of these colors, like, it, I don't know, it's just the way, I don't know, the way it is, I just, I think it's really cool looking. And I'm really digging the colors. I, I really love the way that they're like put, you know, put together. And I'm really excited to, to start it. Um, I'm not excited about the Black Ada, but I am excited about how it's going to look on the Black Ada. So I think I might do this one as well. And I think I should probably, there's other projects I really want to do, but I think I need to go ahead and just um, pull in the reins on it. So I'm trying to slide it all in at once and that did not happen. I need to uh, just stick to a few because if I put, if I, if I do too many at once, I'm never going to get back to the original ones that I wanted to do. So I think I'm going to have to, let me see one. So the ones I've shown you so far, be still as one. Let's see, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, that's seven. Maybe I could just do one more. No, maybe I should just stick to the seven and then once I complete one, maybe try to work those down and then, um, and then start adding other projects in because I do have other projects that I want to do and then I need to complete. Um, yeah, I've got other projects that I need to complete, um, that, or that I would love to complete. Um, and then, uh, let me see, like, it's, and I think some, some of my problem, like I, I have two cells. I still haven't started the Harry Potter one. 
now I'm kind of wondering if I'm going to start it because I am seeing all kinds of stuff that people are adding to their, their things. Like one of them, uh, somebody did a modified howler um, in their letters at the bottom. And I really want to do that one. And uh, somebody did uh, made a headwig pattern to replace one of the owls. And I want to do that. So I'm kind of glad that I hadn't started my thing yet because I'm like seeing all these modifications, which I think in an earlier video, I had made a comment about how I'm like, you know, I was trying to, I was being like all snobby about like modifying this guy's pattern that he worked so hard on. And now I'm seeing all this really cool shit that people are doing that I want to do for mine. So, um, Lot of modifications that people are doing that I want to do on mine so I haven't started it yet um, I, I kind of want to I, I really want to be playing this out a little bit better uh, but um, my other stitch along that I was doing that's out of the just cross stitch magazine uh, that one oh here it is I haven't like I was caught up on it um, this is the one that has the different, uh, specialty stitches in it. And I have not seen the magazine in the store, the new edition. Um, next time I go to Publix, I'm going to look to see if it's there. Um, so I haven't seen it yet so that I can do the next two blocks. Um, when that comes out, I'll work on getting that caught up. Oh, well, no, I won't because I'm going to be doing a ro damn rotation. Lord. Um, but my other two cells that I'm doing. So, I've come to the realization. Because they're not difficult. One of them is the Peppermint Purple Blackwork one. The other one is the linens and linen and threads Quaker mystery stitch along. Hold on one second. There, I had to finish that one. Um, so the peppermint purple and black work one. That's this one here. I'm behind because I lost my motivation to do it. Not because the design is lacking. I absolutely love the black work. Love it. What I am not liking is the fabric I am stitching it on. And I don't like the lighter colors that I picked out. My original idea was to just grab a bunch of random blues and just do them in a random pattern. Just pick a random blue every week and stitch that in that block. I didn't realize it's only, it's one thread. It's, um, and I think this is an 18 count. I'm not sure, but it's only one thread. So the lighter colors are very difficult to see. Like this second box here is actually like full of stitches that you can't even see because it's so light. Same with this one here. I'm not very happy with it. Um, and I had been debating on if I was going to rip them out and do a darker color. And then at, the more I looked at it, I'm like, I don't really like the fabric this is on at all. So, um, I'm not going to rip this out just yet. Um, I might end up doing it, but I'm not 100% positive if I'm going to rip it out just yet. But I am going to start it over. I, what am I saying? I probably will rip this out. I'm not really a big fan of this. I don't like the fabric it's on. I don't like my color choices. Uh, so what I did was I went on stitchpalette.com. I found a different color palette. Uh, I think it's called Northern Lights. And, um, if I have a screenshot of the color palette, I will insert it here. Um, but it's, uh, it's really nice colors. I'm really digging it. Um, digging that color palette. And I think I'm going to find a different fabric to stitch it on because I'm not really digging this fabric. It's very drab. This is not something I want this to be on. So I'm going to find a different fabric. 
Hell, I might even use this fabric here, this opalescent Ada, this 18 count opalescent Ada that I had been stitching my linen and threads Quaker mystery sampler on. I didn't like the way this was coming out either. Um, if you remember from the last time, I was further along than what I am right now. You know why? Because I started ripping the stitches out. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Um, I just was not happy with how it was coming out. So again, I went on Stitch Palette and I found another color palette. If I have a screenshot of it, I will insert it here. Um, I think this one was more of a springtimey one. And let me see. I believe this was more of a springtimey one that had like some purples and yellows and pinks and stuff in it maybe. Um, but both both of them are one, two, three, four, five, six different colors. So um, I, I'm going to order a different fabric for this. I don't really want to do it on the opalescent Ada. I'm going to find something else to stitch on my opalescent Ada. Might do the black work stitch along on it. I'm not 100% certain. Um, I don't know. I might do the quote unquote floss toss and see how both color palettes look on this fabric. Maybe I don't like the, the sampler on here because I'm not really digging the thread I had picked, which was a variegated thread, 4514. I just don't like the way it's coming out. So I'm unpicking that. I'm probably gonna end up, um, I might end up unpicking this. And I think I'm just gonna have to order some fabrics. Uh, I had been trying to just stick with fabric that I had. I had ordered this fabric and it barely fits the sampler. So I was like, oh, I'll just use this. And I, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that anymore. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I'm hoping with doing the rotation the way that I have been thinking about that I will, um, I'm hoping by doing it that way that it will help me with um, keeping an interest in my projects and I'm hoping that I will be able to uh, get some finishes done so that I can get them like, you know, completed and actually like have some accomplishments. That would be great. Anyway, um, I think that's about it for me. Yeah, I think that's about it for me. So thank you so much for watching. Um, if you like what you see, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below and the bell to be notified of whenever I put up a video. Um, and if you have any questions for me, feel free to ask in the comment section down below and I will answer them as well as I can. And um, yeah, I think that's about it. So. I hope you guys have a great day and I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.